reaction video by request of Paxton Spears. I am checking out the channel Thunderbolt 1000 Siren Productions. See if I like it since there's about train stories, apparently. So we're going to look at Graniteville Trash. Ooh, I can't read. Graniteville Train Crash 14 years later. So without further ado, here we go! Trains don't have heartbeats. Okay, so this happened in 2005. Whoever that is. Graniteville, South Carolina. A small town once home to one of the most largest denim manufacturers in the United States, owned by Avondale Mills. Well, you don't sound excited one about of those it. There towns where not much really happens. But on this day, <laughs> that would change forever. Ooh. On January 5th, 2005, NS Local P-22 was parked in a siding near the Avondale Mills plant with two boxcars and GP-59-4622 as power. The train crew had finished its daily run and contacted the local train dispatcher at 7.53 and 7.54 p.m. to clear two track warrants that were protecting the train's use of the tracks. However, the train wasn't going to depart until later into the night, and another train was on its way to pass by, which was NS Manifest 192, consisting of SD60, 6653, and 6593, as power pulling 17 empties and 25 loaded cars, including tanker cars filled with chlorine gas, sodium hydroxide, and Kresel, all very toxic chemicals used for various different things. Uh-huh. The train approached Graniteville at 2.38 a.m. on January 6, 2005. The switch that P-22 used to get into the siding should have been set to the main line for the manifest to pass through. But... This was under the responsibility of the brakeman of P-22. However, it was actually still set for the siding that P-22 was sitting in. 192 rounded the curb into the siding, much to the surprise of the manifest crew, and then... Kaboom! Ah, oh, no explosion. Oh, wait. Uh, I should have said that. He's got hey, uh, I work at uh, Data Processing in Graniteville. Okay. I think there's been a train wreck. Yeah, I'm on where's your uh, message? That's not how you spell wreck. There's a train down here, and there's a strong odor coming from it. This man's running down the sidewalk down there hollering, help, help, help. We come back in the house because we don't know what the fumes are. Okay, we'll get we'll get an ambulance and a fire out there, okay? It's blowing off all over the town down here. Can you see what it is? I'm fixing to walk down there. This this uh. That strong smell. Not I can smell something, but man, it's got it's, it's, it's low to the ground and it's a fog. Nine one one, where's your emergency? Something's wrong with the train. One yeah, crash. That's what's wrong with it. I don't it. know what's happened, but it's letting out some kind of bleach smelling gas. Uh, that one, one, where's your emergency? There are trains you see around. There's chemicals all in it. I don't know what kind of chemicals it is. <laughs> Hello? Uh oh. Are you there? <laughs> oh dear. The two trains collide head on with one another at 2 39 a.m denting the noses of the lead engines and derailing both of them, as well as 16 of 192's cars and one of P-22's freight cars. But the collision ruptured one tank car that was filled with chlorine gas, releasing a toxic cloud which quickly caused locals and the train crew to be gasping for air, much like World War gas, I huh? soldiers did 100 years ago. 5,400 uh, residents within one mile of the crash site were... Oh dear. Oh no. That's gotta be mustard gas then. Force fix 36 and then was rebuilt into a GP 59E, renumbered again to 4652, and is also still in operation today. Avondale Mills, though, 
filed suit against Norfolk Southern, claiming that the railroad was negligent in its operations through Graniteville, and that this alleged negligence was the root cause of the accident. After the incident, Avondale Mills was closed, laying off thousands of employees and paid more than $140 million on cleanup and repair expenses. The trial opened on March 10, 2008 in federal court in Columbia, South Carolina. On March 10, 2010, Norfolk Southern agreed to pay $4 million in penalty to resolve the alleged violations of the Clean Water Act and hazardous material laws thanks to the chlorine release and diesel fuel leakage from the derailed locomotives. They also had to stock nearby Langley Pond with at least 3,000 fish to replace the ones killed by the chlorine spill. Furthermore, the settlement included a supplemental environmental project valued at $100,000 to plant vegetation along the banks of Horse Creek to decrease erosion and sedimentation, thereby improving water quality in Horse Creek. Thirteen years had gone by since this incident, but it's something the people of Graniteville will never forget. It's upsetting. Well, I hope you were into this story like I was. Let me know if you guys want me to react to another one from this channel. Until then, I'll catch you later.